Hello everyone, my name is Nadeem Khan. Welcome to Uncommon Literature. If you have not watched the first lecture, kindly watch that first and then come to this video. So I told you in the previous line that the vulgar activities like prostitution is going on in the ruins which we talked about in the last lines. So you have to understand that this line we have to do in non-detail. So we don't have to go in the depth of these lines. This is the only description of the landscape of that area. So just uh, I read it once and then you will be able to understand it. So here there is a description of a mother who is a prostitute and she is also taking care of her children and right now she is sleeping but she is undisturbed by watch of other people like she is sleeping and some people you know are also seeing her watching her when she is sleeping but she is not disturbed by them near these a nursery erects its head where queens are formed and future heroes bred so what is happening here that since many prostitutes are living here their children are also on the same path a nursery erects its head meaning a small nursery is there where the children are learning to walk on the same path as they are and he Dryden here is calling them as a place where queens are formed and future heroes bred so where the heroes and queens are also born so I think this is ironical not the direct literal meaning here you have to take where unfledged actors learn to laugh and cry so here since this is a place where they are learning it's a nursery so they are also actors where they are learning to laugh and at the same time they are learning also to cry where infant punks punks here is prostitute their tender voices try and here the small prostitutes they are trying their voices they are practicing basically their voices and little maximins the gods defy so maximin was a character in dryden's own play named tyrannic love a tragic hero this was the uh, character and dryden i think did not like this character himself so that is why he is regretful about that moving to the line number 79 great Fletcher never treads in buskins here, nor greater Johnson dares in socks appear. So here there are real life references to two poets or playwrights. John Fletcher, he was the 17th century playwright and he was known for his tragedies. And these both the playwrights are good. They are not bad, but they are good. They do not come into this place which he is referring to okay buskin is a kind of boots which the tragic uh, actors the actors who are you know performing in the tragedies they they wear and they are very long boots they come down to their knees and they also make them look taller in their stature okay so buskins here they don't come Tread means walking. So great Fletcher never treads in buskins here. So I hope I am able to make you understand this. I just explain it one more time that there is no mention of Fletcher's tragedy. The meaning is this. Nor greater Johnson dares in socks appear. So Johnson used to write comedies and in his comedies the actors used to play with socks wearing socks so he is also mentioning there is no kind of comedy here there is no good tragedy no good comedy he wants to say this but gen gentle simkin just reception finds so here you will find simkin what is a simkin here simkin is a clown it is a very common name for a clown the full form you can understand it's simpleton simpleton is equal to Simkin. So it was a term which was used to refer to clown. Clown, I think you are able to understand, or I make you understand it. In most of the uh, you know uh, Shakespeare's plays, like uh, as you like it, there is a character of clown, and clown has the ability to 
comment on anything on anyone by using humor okay so though it is a clown it is a kind of a, a person who cracks jokes but at the same time it is also a character which is uh, you know talking the real thing on the people's faces come back to dryden amidst this monument of vanished minds so these lines are together but gentle simkin just reception find so basically in this place in this monuments you will only find simkin and not the other great uh, uh, playwrights like fretcher or johnson which we talked about in the earlier lines pure uh, monuments of vanished minds meaning that here the people do not have minds they do not have good minds vanished mean disappeared mind so in their head they don't have any brain the minds are disappeared pure clinches clinches here is used for puns so you can understand puns basically pun is a kind of word which has more than one meaning so for example there there can be so many words and it can have multiple meanings pure clinches the sub urban muse afford so he they they are talking about dryden is saying that here you will only find clinches like puns that the people who are living in the sub urban area like this they can only understand the puns they do not have intellect to understand some greater work muse is a goddess to whom any writer or any poet dedicates or you know asks for the inspiration so and penton waging harmless war with words so penton was a real life uh, uh, playwright who was very fond of using puns so that is why these lines are together so he was using a lot of puns and that is why dryden has mentioned him that he is having a harmless war with words here flacno as a place to fame well known ambitiously designed his shadwell's throne so what is the meaning of these line that in whatever lines we have read previously dryden has said the description of kingdom which is going to be ruled by shadwell now when he becomes the king it is full of nonsense people devoid of any kind of good playwrights and the people do not have intellect and this is the place which flacno has designed for shadwell's throne this is the meaning is in these two lines for ancient decker prophesied long since that in this pile should reign a mighty prince born for a scourge of wit and flail of sense what is the meaning of these three lines you have to understand here that Th thomas decker was an ill regarded english writer and he was also a victim of ben johnson satire named the poetaster so you can understand ben johnson criticized decker in his work the poetaster and you can understand dryden is bringing the reference of this playwright or writer who was already you know attacked by ben johnson so you can understand the similarity here between decker and shadwell so that is why this line is there that decker prophesied long since prophecy prophecy means future telling that in this pile should reign a mighty prince so in this pile pile means you can understand a pile of garbage or any kind of you know burden which is lying there for a long time born for a scourge of wit and flail of sense and for this kind of garbage okay which is devoid of any wit and sense only shadwell can rule it so this is the this is the you know a uh, thick meaning which you can take out of these lines moving ahead line number 90 to whom true dullness should some psyches o but words of misers from his pen should flow you have to understand 
that here psyche and miser they both are the name of shadwell's plays here this is the reference to shadwell's plays and obviously the true dullness is talked about in his writings humorists hypocrites it should produce and when such dullness is there it can only produce the words like humorist or the hypocrite these are also the name of the plays by shadwell whole raymond families and tribes of bruce so raymond and bruce are the characters of humorist and virtuoso respectively okay i moved very fast and i just uh, come back to it again that in the last four lines dryden has talked about four to five plays by shadwell and he has criticized these plays for the dullness which shadwell used in you know in them so this is the whole scenario here and last in the last line we have the names of two characters and obviously the families and the tribes of these characters are created by shadwell himself okay. line number 94 now now this is the time for the coronation of shadwell coronation is basically the crowning of shadwell flacno is going to put the crown on the head of shadwell here this is the coronation this is the coronation time now empress fame had published the renown of shadwell's coronation through the town now you can understand that the empress fame fame is uh, you know personified here that the goddess or the empress fame made it public throughout the town that this is the coronation of shadwell this is the time for the coronation of shadwell this was the news all around the town roused by report of fame the nations meet and through this news which was spread by the fame the nations meet meaning the all the people have gathered there from near bun hill and distant watling street he is saying that people have come from near banhil this is the place which is near and to the distant wardling street which is a place which is at distant okay but there is the irony here wardling street and banhil are two places in london which are not at a very long distance they are at you know nearby to each other so this is again a sort of comedy which you have to understand this is a comic element or an irony playing uh, played on shadwell here that he dryden wants to say that he is the emperor or the king of a very small place no persian carpets spread the imperial way so he is saying on his way where he is going to come imperial mean royal way where he is going to come there is no persian carpet persian carpets are very precious so he is saying that there is no persian carpet spread for his you know treading where he can walk upon but what is there scattered limbs of mangled poets lay scattered scattered means spread limbs means the you know the physical body limbs of mangled poets lay it does not have the persian carpet but it has the limbs scattered all around of mangled poets mangled meaning injured poets injured here you can say that i want to explain it in easy language that when shadwell is walking to come on the throne he is walking on a path which is not you know covered by persian carpet but it is a path which has injured many good poets of that time you do you understand i i i make it easier that when a poet like shadwell is becoming king 
think about the other people who were writing good work obviously they must have felt bad so this is the whole concept here which he is talking about that he is coming to the throne at the cost of uh, many good poets from dusty shops neglected authors come and he is also saying that many neglected authors have come neglected authors you can understand their works nobody read dusty shops and they are the authors from dusty shops dusty shops meaning of the uh, bookshops their books are lying in the bookshops with dust so they are the authors of these books uh, books you know bookshops they have also come in this coronation My, martyrs of pies and relics of the bum this is a uh, you know really comic uh, line here so what happens sometimes that these the poets which are neglected the authors which are neglected nobody read their work what happens of their works their books are torn and people use them for other purposes for example using the paper for keeping the pie okay to eat from it or to uh, clean their bum sometimes while you know uh, getting uh, you know done from the toilet so in the toilet people are also using the paper from their books so you can understand it by this line the relics of the bum in number 102 much hay wood surely ogle by their lay so in the path the works of hay wood surely and ogle by he was a scottish uh, poet his poetry was also not good so these are three poets where their works were not good their works are also piled up on this way on which shadwell is walking to come down on the throne but loads of shadwell almost choked the way but though there are three bad poets but here is shadwell whose work choked the way completely his works are lying on the path and they have made the path completely choked okay built stationers for yeoman stood prepared you have to understand here built stationers meaning the cheated uh, book sellers the book sellers who were selling the books of these poets or playwrights and they were cheated because they they were not able to sell these books and they have come here to be the royal attendants and they are prepared to be the royal attendants for the coming or the arrival of shadwell and herring man was captain of the guard herring man was the name of the publisher and the bookseller who published the work of shadwell his full name was henry herring man he was the publisher of shadwell he was the captain of the guard there when he is coming on the way herring man was the captain of the guard the hori prince hori means white or aged prince meaning flecno in majesty appeared he has come now high on a throne of his own labors reared so he is sitting on a throne which is very high and he is the one who has made that throne with his own hard labor okay not literally but with his competency he is the first king there and he prepared the way for shadwell so this is the meaning at his right hand our young ascanius sat and where where flecno is sitting on his right side our young ascanius sat our shadwell the new king sat at the right hand side of flecno who is ascanius ascanius was one of the founders of the rome okay and again you can have the uh, reference here of some classical hero of rome 
is being compared to Shadwell, who is a matter of joke. Okay, so they you Dryden is deliberately using sometimes the high figure to compare with Shadwell so that we can understand how trivial Shadwell is and to evoke the comic element from it. Rome's other hope and pillar of the state. So obviously Shadwell is being compared to Ascanius, who was the hope of the Rome and the pillar of the state. Line number 110, his brows thick fogs instead of glory's grace. So in this line, he is talking about the physical appearance of Shadwell. And in the second line, the lambent dullness played around his face, meaning that his dullness is glowing around his face. Okay, it's kind of halo. Halo, do you know? The around ring, around some divine people, divine, you know, uh, characters. So, Shadwell also have a kind of circle around his face, but that circle is of dullness. As Hannibal did to the altars come, sworn by his sir, a mortal foe to Rome. So, Hannibal was a, a general from Carthage. He was sworn, he was made to swear by his God to remain a constant enemy of Rome. So Shadwell also took an oath just like Hannibal did to remain, uh, you know, true to his promise. Nor should his vow be vain, meaning that his vow, his promise would not be wasted that he till death true dullness would maintain and he would maintain till his death true dullness that till he dies he will maintain the true dullness which he is in constantly and in his father's right and realm's defense and he is saying this in his father's right and in the right of his realm or in the defense of his realm realm here means his kingdom never to have peace with wit nor truce with sense he is saying that i would never have the peace with wit and i will also not have truce with sense so he is saying truce meaning a kind of peace with sense so he will never be in friendship with sense but he will also uh, be fighting with the wit continuously. I told you this already. The king himself, the sacred unction made. Unction here is a kind of oil, okay, which is, uh, you know, applied on the new king. And this new oil was made by Flecno himself. Because here I want to take you uh, a little away from this poem. If, do you remember I told you who is Flecno actually? Flecno is Richard Flecno. He is an Irish poet. But he was a part-time poet. His full-time job was as a priest. Remember this. So now keep this point into your mind and read the next line. As king by office and as priest by trade. So Flecno is king by his office but a priest by his trade. So I think you are able to understand this line now. In his sinister hand, sinister here just meaning left hand. Okay, in the left hand, instead of ball, ball of you know which symbolizes the power of the whole kingdom. That now keep this ball in your hand, and this symbolizes the scepter of the whole kingdom that you keep the power in your hand. He did not put the ball in his hand, but he put a, a kind of, you know, alcohol. He placed the mighty mug of potent ale. So he put a mighty mug, very big mug of alcohol. Love's kingdom to his right he did convey. And he is saying that on his right, he conveyed love's kingdom. Love's kingdom is another work by Shadwell. At once his scepter and his rule of sway. So he, these are the references to the power of Shadwell, which are represented 
by scepter and his rule before we move ahead as i told you on the left hand he was given a big jug of uh, alcohol and on his right hand he was given uh, the work by shadwell that is love's kingdom and by reading that uh, uh, he tells further flacno tells further or dryden tells that by writing this work he got inspiration when he was young to write another work that was psyche okay so this is the uh, reference in the next line whose righteous lore the prince had practiced young so righteous lore here meaning true traditional knowledge which prince had practiced here here prince is used for shadwell and from whose loins recorded psyche sprung and from whose knowledge also came out psyche loins you can understand it is the area uh, around your uh, private part so you can understand how the cosmic element is going further when he is talking about the work of shadwell his temples last with poppies were overspread so this uh, these lines we don't have to go into much detail we can read them into non detail so i will just read them once and explain it to you so what happens poppies here is used for opium so after that shadwell's temple this forehead is covered with poppies opium to uh, you know commemorate this day when this conversation is going on just at that time he is saying that if the news is not a lie on his left hand 12 reverend owls did fly so 12 owls were seen on his left hand so there is a reference to another classical uh, event when romulus he was one of the founders of rome when he was visited by 12 owls and they showed him where he should establish the rome city so romulus it is sung by timbers brook presage of sway from twice six vultures took this is the same thing which is being said here we move further into 132 line the admiring throng loud exclamations made so by seeing this that okay the 12 owls have come and they foretell us the great rule of shadwell which is coming ahead hearing this the admiring throng throng here means the group of people the crowd which is in admiration admiration of uh, shadwell they exclaim uh, aloud and omens of his future empire take and this is an omen and they take it for his future empire that okay this is the foretelling omen is basically if you are uh, aware of any uh, homer homer's work omen is uh, some activity or some sign which happens in present but it tells something which is going to come in future the sir then shook the honors of his head here sir is used for flacno then he shook the honors of his head so what is happening here he shook his gray hair and from his brows dams of oblivion shed and he shed some sweat from his Uh, brows okay he full on the filial dullness okay what is doing that he is giving his sweat to shadwell filial is basically the familiar which is related to family filial dullness so this dullness is relative relative here means inside the family long he stood and he was standing stand you know st standing still without keeping or without speaking anything repelling from his breast the raging god and he is trying to speak something but he is not able to speak at this time he is controlling his emotion at length burst out in this prophetic mood and after gathering his courage to speak he burst out whatever he has to say we stop here kindly share this lecture among your friends and 
सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल थैंक यू सो मच